Hey you guys! Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone. Welcome to the show. This is the Anarchist MMA and Miscellany. I'm your host, Jesse the Anarchist Elliot. Uh, you know, I just wanna again I wanna thank everyone who's supported me thus far. The uh, the uh Facebook page I set up just just in this first week it's already up over a hundred likes. It's probably about 150 or so right now, and um, uh, our network, uh, the Voluntary Virtues Network, is about 500 subscribers on YouTube already, and this is, June is just the, the test month, so uh, I can see it growing a lot more. Uh, speaking of, I uh, want to thank Michael Shanklin once again for asking me to host a show, uh, and if you want to be a guest or be featured, demonstrating the move of the week, either one. And you can get a hold of me on Facebook, Twitter, by email. Uh, my uh, all the information is below, by the way. But uh, my my email is Jesse underscore Elliot one zero eight three at hotmail dot com. That's J E S S E Elliot's E L L I O T T. And Facebook is Facebook.com slash MMA Miscellany. That's M M A M I S C E L L A N Y. And then on Twitter is at Jesse Anarch E. That's J E S S E A N A R C H E. Just the letter E. And you know, if you weren't with us last week, you haven't had a chance to watch the video yet, which you know, go watch it after you see this one talking to you. Anyway, I I talked a lot about why I fight, how I became an amateur fighter, how I could reconcile a philosophy of nonviolence with combat sports, with cage fighting. And I also talked a bit about the philosophy of anarchism or voluntarism. What I didn't really get into was how and why I became an anarchist, which I might try to delve into a bit later if I got time, uh, we'll see. You know, before I recorded last week's episode, I had actually let my brother look over some of my notes and got basically, you know, kind of an outside perspective, and uh, he, he raised some questions, some concerns, uh, one question he had was basically about the theme of the show, and I went over this last week. But you know, basically, is this about anarchism or is it about MMA? And the answer I gave was, of course, yes. It's, it's, it's both. You know, I I did. I don't know. Probably a lot of you haven't seen it, but I did actually make a video announcing the show before it, before I'd done any filming, before it even aired, and kind of about what the show was going to be about. So I think I'll just, to help clear some of that up, I think I'll go ahead and just show that video now. Take fucking eight million. Here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Jesse Elliott. Starting next week, I'm going to be hosting a new show on the Voluntary Virtues Network called Anarchists. MMA and Miscellany. Um, it's going to air Sunday evenings, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Uh, it's basically going to be an MMA show for libertarians and anarchists, or if you will, a libertarian show for uh, MMA fighters, fans, uh, whatever. Um, it's not just going to be limited to combat sports. Uh, I've got ADD, uh, so I've got a lot of, a lot of different interest uh, topics I hope to cover. You know, who knows what the hell I'm going to talk about. Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. Uh, anyway, guess. Uh, I'm an MMA fighter myself. Uh, amateur fighter at Glory MMA and Fitness. We sell in Missouri. Um, so, um, obviously, I'm going to have other fighters as guests. Um, martial artists. Um, you know, libertarians involved in the fight game. A lot of different things. Probably more than that. I uh, hope to get a lot of cool guests. Uh, I hope to do... Uh, one segment I got planned right now is to have like a move of the week. Um, 
you know, who knows what else I might add. Um, I think that's it. Um, below, there's going to be some information. You want to get a hold of me. Uh, you want to follow me, whatever. Um, and my my Facebook, my Twitter, my, my, my fighter page on Facebook. You want to like it, follow me on Twitter. Uh, do things, you know, whatever you kids do. Um, you want to be a guest. You got questions, comments. want to tell me how cool I am. Uh, tell me I suck. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway... Thanks, everybody. I'm really excited about this. Uh, again, it's going to start next Sunday um, on Law Terry Virtues Network, uh, on the YouTube channel, whatever. Um, next Sunday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Hope to see you guys again. Thanks again. You know, a while back, I had also written my, basically my vision for the show, posting on Facebook and everything. So I think if I read that, for those of you who don't know, didn't see it, that should really clear up, you know, exactly what my vision for the show is going to be. Hey everyone, so you know me, most probably don't. I seem to be a token MMA fighter in my libertarian slash anarchist circles. I uh, want my friend involved in the podcast. And I figured a show was needed with the cannabis perspective. But I also have ADD and a lot of other interests, so I figured a title like MMA and Miscellany would be on a good perspective. Obviously, I don't know, and I don't want that exact title. I don't want to do a little bit of combat sports coverage occasionally, but mostly talk about how government regulation or like that affects sports and especially individual athletes. Uh, there'll be other content as well, as I'm not one to follow a strict structure. So I'm looking for anyone involved in the fight game, as fighters, managers, coaches, promoters that identifies as an anarchist or the return to have a guest. This includes amateurs as well as pro fighters, combat martial artists, other combat sports, athletes and coaches, you know, boxing, kickboxing, etc. And probably any uh, athlete or coach who's an anarchist will be welcome guests as well. Uh, I'll probably also have some cop lot content as well. So, we clears mud, hopefully. Uh, so now we know what I really want out of the show, what I expect to, it to become. Um, now when, when I've written that, that part about the uh, government regulations and all that stuff affecting sports, especially combat sports. In particular, I had... John McCain's shenanigans in mind. I'm sure most of you know, just in case you don't know who John McCain is, he was a U.S. Senator from Arizona, ran for president, all that. Uh, most of you, I assume, should know, considering he was the Republican nominee for president in 2008. Anyway, uh, he's the guy behind that human cockfighting quote, you know, he's comparing the, the UFC to human cockfighting. You know, you know, assholes like McCain, they're not really concerned about how how violent the UFC, but the sport of MMA is. Because, you know, think about this, when they're passing a law banning a sport or something like that, what they're, what they're really doing, or what they're really saying is that we are going to point guns at people and threaten them with violence. You know, which is exactly what they did. They pointed the guns of the government at the people involved in the other UFC and MMA and threatened them with violence, with cages, you know, with, with fines, which are a form of extortion. And, uh, and it's... So they're not really concerned with the violence because they're trying to use violence to stop even greater violence to stop it, uh, and not to mention that this is anybody involved in contact sport. They usually know the risks, right? They're they're agreeing to do this, knowing that they could get hurt. That this is a contact sport. This is very extreme. You know, this is inherently violent. Um, but you know they. 
it's not like they're really concerned with the safety. They weren't really concerned with the safety of the, of early MMA of the early UFC because you know, boxing has been shown to be even more dangerous than MMA, especially in the long term. As far as like uh, brain damage and things like that, you know, um, as with most politicians and lobbyists, it it's really he's it's it's self serving. He's serving his own interests. Uh, you can you can pretty much any crusaders like this, you can you can find some kind of self serving motive. McCain is no exception. So while I was researching Senator McCain's history of harassing the UFC and combat sports, uh, you know, other early MMA promoters, all that. You know, I came across this uh, pretty interesting article on phoenixnewtimes.com. Uh, it was called, uh, John McCain Breaks Up a Fight. Was, uh, written by Amy Silverman. And... This article, it actually, it, there's a lot of references to content that Eddie Goldman wrote on tapout.com years ago. But looking through the archives of tapout.com, I couldn't find the, the stuff that he had actually written. So I don't know, maybe the archives just don't go back that far anymore. Or maybe I'd have to get on, like, I was doing it off my phone, so maybe my, my mobile browser is a bit limited. But, um, anyway, in the Phoenix New Times article, she brought up a, she brought up a lot of interesting points. You know, so, he was, McCain was heavily involved in getting the sport banned in New York, uh, amongst other states. Uh, and not surprisingly, there were some former boxers on the... You know, the boxing athletic, the boxing commission in New York that were also involved in that, um, and he put pressure on local politicians and promoters in his home state of Arizona. You know, one example, and actually this is what the article was about, was a celebrity theater owner uh, Bill Bacan. I'm not sure how to spell it, uh, how to pronounce that. He he actually ended up canceling a sold-out show just hours before the doors were going to open, you know, because of you know all the all the bullying of John McCain. And he said, "quote I'm not going to take on the U.S. Senate." End quote. You know the the article basically kind of goes into a conspiracy theory that. Um, that Eddie Goldman had that involves John McCain, Anheuser Bush, and um, boxing. Yeah, you know, John McCain boxing and Anheuser Bush. Um, so apparently, Goldman had this theory that McCain opposed early MMA because it was a it was a threat to boxing pay per view sales, basically. Um, now, the largest corporate sponsor of boxing at the time was Anheuser Busch, Budweiser. And McCain's father in law, Jim Hensley, owned Hensley and Company, which was the second, yeah, second largest wholesaler, was Budweiser's second largest wholesaler in the country. And apparently, McCain also owned significant stock in both. Anheuser Busch and Hensley and Co. We're talking about in the millions of dollars. Plus, they were both major campaign contributors to John McCain during his Senate runs in the '90s and all that. Um, so, the article goes on to validate this theory based on his history with the campaign finance reform. Now, think about this. You know, he he made a lot of campaign money when he was lobbying for for reform, because it was something he didn't expect to get passed, nobody really expected, you know, later the, later it did, you know, what, ten years later, but 
he made all this money for his own uh, senator Senate campaigns by by getting all that free media exposure because he was running a campaign of campaign finance reform. Uh, it was pretty hypocritical of him, but anyway, um, you know something I didn't already know was that McCain was apparently ringside when the boxer uh, Jimmy Garcia. Uh, he lost a fight and ended up, you know, he, he fell to the canvas after the fight, after he'd already lost. Um, ended up being rushed to the hospital, had, had brain surgery and all that, slipped into a coma. He died a couple weeks later. And McCain was, was ringside for that fight and he still remained a fan. Um, so, you know, dozens of Americans in the last hundred years or whatever they've they've died as a result of injury sustained boxing. Um, you know, there's football players, NFL football players that have died as a result of injuries during practice or during games. Um, and you know, when McCain when he started his crusade against UFC early UFC and MMA at the time. Nobody had, nobody had ever died from a UFC match, from an MMA match, a no holds barred, you know. And this is even going back to uh, decades of history in Japan and Brazil as well, not just the United States, which they've been having Veltudo and you know, like, no holds barred type matches. And, you know, there was stuff kind of like that going on in the U.S. too, like back early, you know, turn of the century, you know, 20th century and all that. It's, it's not like it... The UFC was something that nobody had ever seen before, because similar things have been going on around the world for a long time. But anyway, so nobody had had died in a match like, and still, um, as of now, to my knowledge, nobody has died in a sanctioned MMA match. Um, so McCain was basically he was trying to squash future competition for. Boxing's market share of pay-per-view buys. Um, so, you know, from its founding in 1993, you know, the UFC, you know, it, it grew pretty pretty rapidly, and just in two years, uh, the UFC, along with other combat sports promotions that were similar, uh, they they combined to form almost 10% of the total pay-per-view event market share. Uh, and around that time was when McCain and others started campaigning against the UFC. And it was, it was banned in a lot of states, a lot of you know. Um, and in 1997, it ended up being dropped by TCI and Time Warner Cable. They weren't, they weren't carrying it anymore. So, you know, they were facing a lot of trouble. They, they even started putting in rules. You know, the gloves, weight classes, you know, limited weight classes, but there was time limit and all that stuff. Uh, it still wasn't enough, apparently. Um, you know, this. Uh, it looks like this article that I was reading. It was written in 1998, um, and the rest. Is pretty much history, you know. He pretty much almost killed the the UFC and MMA in the United States. It, you know, it really struggled to find success. There were some kind of big promotions that popped up and ended up failing. There's like the IFC. I remember that one, but um, nothing got really big. You know, and had Dana White not convinced the Fertitta brothers to buy the UFC. Uh, around the turn of the millennium, you know, it's, who knows, who knows it would have even gone on, you know. Now, so we know Bud Light is a big corporate sponsor, you know, eventually Bud Light became a corporate sponsor for the UFC. And, interestingly enough, uh, it was, it was around that same time that McCain admitted that the, the sport had matured, right? Um, 
so there's nothing there's nothing fishy there. So. What I'm trying to say is fuck you, John McCain. You're a bitch, and your greed and your lies almost single-handedly destroyed a sport that I and a lot of you love. Uh, I'm sure uh, you guys, most like MMA, you won't be watching about a show about MMA. So, again, fuck you, John McCain. You're a bitch. Moving on. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned before, I'm all about self-defense, right? Uh, people learning self-defense and just, it's a basic human right. You know, everybody should learn self-defense, I think. Um, even, you know, just, just basics. Now, some of you remember, there's a few weeks ago, there's a story about the Miss USA contestant. She, she won, actually. Uh, she was a contestant from Nevada, Miss Nevada. Uh, Nia Sanchez, who's a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. You know, her being asked about um, how to prevent sexual assault on women, things like that. And um, her answer got a lot of backlash from so-called feminists. Um, you know, the, the, I don't, I don't really get it. Like, yet you should, you should defend yourself, you know, and you hear all these government reports that basically tell you to cow or piss yourself, you know, get a pair of scissors, dumb shit. They don't ever talk about, uh, taking martial arts lessons or carrying a gun, you know, armed women don't get raped, you know, and confident people, people that don't look like victims, they don't get preyed upon for the most part, you know, a, a sociopath, a, a predator looks for victims. Um, you know, and I'm, women should live in self-defense, everybody should, you know, I'm all about preventing violent attacks, especially from a stronger party versus a weaker party. You know, I'm all about women's empowerment, but just, you know, everybody's empowerment. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to be a victim of violent crime. So, uh, here was the, here was her quote, you know, part of her quote that got all that back with us. You know, more awareness is very important so women can learn to protect themselves, uh, you need to be more confident and be able to defend yourself. That's something we need to implement for a lot of women. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, it's almost like she took those words, like, or similar words right out of my mouth. Because I pretty much, that's, that's the answer I always give, you know, or self-defense. You know, I actually recommend Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to any woman I talk to. Um, you know, the, the... For those familiar with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, the guard position where, you know, the person on top is between the legs of the person on the bottom. And the person on the bottom is actually in a good position in Jiu-Jitsu. You get a lot of attacks from there. And so would-be rapist has to, pretty much all the time, they're trying to get between a woman's legs. Trying to get on top of her, get between her legs. So if that woman knew Jiu-Jitsu... Uh, she's gonna be able to fuck him up. She's gonna be able to get uh, a positional advantage over him, um, and pretty much if she's doing any grappling, because that's you're up close and personal uh, in a in a sexual assault like that. Um, so yeah, so as law, you know, you know that's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a great for self defense. So anyway. Um, you know, everyone should learn to defend themselves. Obviously, I've already spoken about this numerous times. Uh, but speaking of, um, we're going to get into the move of the week here pretty soon. Uh, so, a uh, teammate of mine, this kid named Tyler Rowe, who, by the way, we're both going to be uh, competing uh, next weekend in Grappling Alliance, the, the first, the inaugural Grappling Alliance. It's going to be up at... An, I think the uh, North Kansas City High School. Um, but anyway, he's going to demonstrate a belly to back suplex. And when y'all are watching this, I want you to keep in mind that I'm around a little over 160 pounds, and he's he told me he was about 225. He's well over 220 pounds. So I want you guys to keep this in mind when you watch this. Uh, so he demonstrates it on me, and then I try to demonstrate on him. 
So here it is. Move of the week. I'm going to do two different suplexes on Jesse Elliott, the anarchist, and so the first one I just do right here, and all I do is cross three, take the back, once I'm here, I hop up, and drop my hips, and down, so. Are you recording? Okay. The second one, I'm going to shoot, so I'm going to circle through, and here again. And this one's an inverted, so I'm going here, oh, and then there. So Throw that inverted again. All right, so again, we're right here. I shoot. So it's like you're shooting for a single. And then you yep. Back. Okay. Shooting for a single. I get up. All right, so. Uh, Yep, and then let go. Take him to the back. And now straight that way. Yep. Oh, and what we did last week. We ran into Chuck. Got all that. Yeah. Is there anything that you, any questions you would have? Yeah, as far as that, how that two plate works on the thing. He's over there. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm good. I, okay. I saw it. <laughs> all right, so. Wait, this, all you got to work it slowly. Do a slide. Do a Clear the arm. And then make sure you get good posture and up and over. So basically, basically all it is is when you pick them up, you just use your back leverage, pull them back, use the leverage of their weight, come back in the yeah, throw. Yeah, you're, you're pulling them up on your hip. Yep. It's all hip. It's like you're, you're it's all hip. It's no It's back. like a think about your dry humping them. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's not anything sexual. But that's the easiest way to just. Oh yeah, it is. You got that gable grip. And it's just like that. Yep. It's just right here. And then their weight, the gravity pulling them down. You just let them fall. Mm -hmm. All right. Exactly. You get them up and let them fall. Exactly. Is that all we got this week? Uh yeah. This yes. is the move of the week. This is Tyler. What's and your name, Tyler? Tyler Rowe. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, Jesse Elliott, this has been moving week on and we'll, the Anarchist, be, MMA, and it's miscellaneous. And you'll be seeing us on June 28th at a Jiu Jitsu tournament in Kansas City. And we'll play that. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler, again. Uh, so as you guys saw, I was able to take down a guy with about 60 pounds on me in that demonstration. Um, so it's it's not always about you know, size and strength. It's more about a lot of grappling, you know, uh, wrestling, jujitsu, judo, all that. It's, it's about leverage and technique more than anything else. Uh, so anyway, uh, kind of ran out of time. I was hoping to go over some other stuff, but I'll just say that for another episode. Um, but one thing I wanted to thank uh, Hannah. The Siri, uh, she made me a couple of patches sent to me. Uh, Rebel Fighter patches uh, with the Gadsden flag. I thought they were pretty cool. I'm going to get one on my gi and on my fight shorts. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you know, hopefully uh, we'll see. We should see Hannah on the show in the future. Probably in the, in the near future. Um, uh... So some things I got coming up, like I've mentioned before, I've got a fight coming up in August, uh, August 16th at Gales Howard Davidson in Grandview. Um, I'm on the amateur portion of that card and basically the, the main card is going to be a pro tournament, a uh, bantamweight tournament. The, it's going to be a four-man tournament and the winner is going to win a brand new bike, you know, new Harley Davidson, so that should be pretty cool. Um, you can actually get tickets for that already on cagetakes.com. Anyway, in the Kansas City area is wanting to go to that and you're watching now. Um, you know, Cage Ticks. Um, I think cagetakes.com, I think you can put slash KCFA and you select uh, the Fight for Your Bike event. As the event, you can select Jesse Elliott as a fighter, and then choose your choose your ticket, whatever. Um, make sure if you buy them off of there, you know, 
make sure you select me as your fighter so I get little of my cut for selling tickets. Anyway, uh, and then also there's the Grappling Alliance. I'm going to join some of my uh, glory teammates up at the uh, up in North Kansas City. Like I said before, this is the inaugural tournament. And I've never done anything like this before. I'm kind of excited. It's less than a week away. Uh, so we'll see how I do You know, next week. Uh, obviously, I'll tell you all how I did. Maybe I'll, I'm going to try to get some footage from it, actually, if I can get somebody to film for me while I'm there. So we'll see. But anyway, uh, if you're watching, you've been watching The Anarchist MMA and Miscellany with your host, Jesse Anarchist Elliot, on Voluntary Virtues Network. Thanks for watching, and good night.